uh, thank you everyone. I'm going to call this meeting in order at three, uh, sorry, at 4.34 p.m. Um, first, I would like to do a territorial acknowledgement. Territorial acknowledgement. Uh, we respectfully acknowledge that the SFS is located on the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, including the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Coquitlam, and Katsi nations. Unceded means that these territories have never been handed over, sold, or given up by these nations, and we are currently occupied territories. We do these things not just to read off a sheet, but to be aware of Canada's colonial history and the continuing mistreatment of the Indigenous people and so much more. And I encourage uh, everyone who is here and people watching in the future to uh, read up more about our history, both in events that both happened in the past and continue to happen today. Uh, let's start with a roll call of attendance. Um, uh, start with the chair. Oh, and please you state your name, pronouns, and access needs. And access needs are anything that we can do to make the meeting, uh, allow you to engage with the meeting more, uh, or if there's anything that you have to do that would, if you have to leave the meeting early, or if there's some other thing that would make it difficult for you to um, engage, like background noises and things like that. So I will start with myself. My, um, I'm the chair. Um, the v, I serve as the VP Internal Organizational Development. Uh, my name is Corbett. My pronouns are he, him, his, and all my access needs are met. Um, start with, next with the Vice Chair, uh, Gender, Sexuality, Women's Studies Counselor. Hey everyone, my name's Devin. She, her, hers pronouns. My access needs are met other than I have to leave at 5.30 for the Oversight Committee meeting, but there's only three of us, so who knows if the meeting will go fast. <laughs> It's all in the discussions. <laughs> okay, uh, VP Events and Student Affairs. Hello, my name is Jess. I pronounce her, she, her, hers, and all my access needs are met. Thank you. VP Equity and Sustainability Marie Haddad is not going to be here today. She sent her regrets. Uh, Sustainability Engineering Counselor has not attended yet, um, and I don't believe he sent her regrets. Um, so we'll see. Maybe he'll show up a little bit later. If anyone has them on Facebook or social media, please double check. Maybe he just forgot. Or you had something come up. Um, society staff, uh, let me see, just go quick check. Um, our policy research and community affairs coordinator is not yet here, but she said she told me she'd be a bit late, uh, but she will be here. Um, operational organizer was nailed to 10 today. Administrative assistant. Hi, my name is Christina. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and all my access needs are met. Thank you. So consent, I'll move on to 4.1, the consent agenda. We resolve to adopt the consent agenda by unanimous consent. Um, do I have any objections to this? Uh, right now, the only thing is uh, matters rising for the minutes. Uh, for We're approving the last two sets of governance minutes from April and one from July. Uh, seeing no objections to the items in the consent agenda, so that carries unanimously. Um, and we will move on to uh, 5.1. 5, 5 uh, adoption of the agenda. Be resolved to adopt the agenda as presented. Do I have a mover? Devin moves. Do I have a seconder? Could I amend the agenda to include sure, regrets after. from Marie Haddad? Oh, just kidding. Okay, we'll do that after. I second. Thank you. Discussions. Now, if you would like to amend, go ahead. I would like to amend the agenda to include regrets, a section of regrets from VP Equity and Sustainability, Marie Haddad. Okay. Um, do I have, you move that? So do you have a seconder for that amendment? Or is there, before we get to that, do we have any other amendments? Um, can I actually amend the agenda to move uh, 8.3? Uh, sorry, uh, I'm looking at the wrong agenda. Uh, can I move, uh, I have a lot of agendas running right now, uh, to move, uh, sorry, 6.3 
um, higher up on the discussion list as I may have to, I have to leave early and I would like to, it's time sensitive for my next meeting. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, so you would like to move it up to be the first part of discussion items, I'm assuming. That would be great, thanks. Okay, um, sure. Any other amendments to the agenda? Nope. Okay, uh, so do I, okay. I'll move this batch of amendments. Do I have a seconder? Just seconds. Thank you. Um, any discussion on these amendments as a whole? Do you want to do them all at once, or do you have to? Do we feel it's necessary to split them up? Giving you opportunities to like mess things up. That's all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, seeing uh, no no new comments, um, we'll move to a vote. Uh, all in favor, seeking out consent, uh, please you raise your, use the raise hand feature in Zoom if you'd like to dissent or abstain. And I'll call on you for your vote. Seeing no uh, raise hand, uh, that carries unanimously. Now we'll move back to the main motion. Uh, any more discussion on amendments to the agenda? No? Seeing none. Uh, Move to see. Move to a vote. Uh, I do these multiple times in a row. My brain, for some reason, gets messed up. Um, all in favor, seeking a unanimous unanimous consent, uh, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom to unmute your mic. Sorry, to uh, say a you want to dissent or abstain. On you to record record your vote. Seeing no um, sense or abstentions, that carries unanimously. Um, I'll just wait for Mohammed to log in and then we'll uh, do a quick introduction with him. And... Hi, Mohammed. Thank you for joining us. Uh, when you have a chance, can you do a quick uh, round of um, names, access needs, pronouns? Um, well, that's happening. I will we'll move on to um, ratification of regrets. Be it resolved to approve the regrets from Marie Haddad. Um, do I have a mover? Just moves. Do I have a seconder? Devin seconds. Thank you, Devin. Um, any discussion? Nope, no discussion. Okay, move to a vote. Uh, all in favor, uh, seeking unanimous consent. If you would like to um, uh, abstain or dissent, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom and I will call on you to record your vote. Seeing none, uh, the vote carries unanimously. Moving on to next item. Uh, we are into discussion items, so we'll go to discussion 6.1. Council policy R-315, sorry, 3.5, Exec Committee Duties, see page 15 of Council Policies, as submitted by our Vice Chair, uh, GSWS Councillor Devin Buttersworth. Uh, I'll give you the floor to you to explain this. Cool. Yeah. So in going over all the council policies for the oversight committee, I saw, um, sorry, just pulling it up so I can read it. Um, when I was going through the exact, uh, exact uh, requirements, um, and I noticed that um, each exec is required to be uh, are expected to share at least one standing committee of the society and actively participate in one other committee of the society other than the executive committee. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to make sure, uh, my understanding of that is that chairing one and then a member of one other than the exec is pretty straightforward. That mm -hmm. currently is not being met, but the one, one of the people is not being met by is the chair. And I was curious if we thought that this would apply to the chair is usually the chair is the chair of all the committees that they are on, like the uh, 
I'm just trying to think of the videos that gave us on, but he is usually the chair and he's quite a few. Um, I don't know if we think as a governance and for yourself, Corbett, you are a member of a lot of uh, committees, but you also chair a couple of committees. Um, if it's quite a rigid rule and it, I don't know if, if we want to go with that rule, if we want to review it as the governance committee, I just wanted to know thoughts before I brought it of the governance to, uh, before I brought it to oversight. Sure. Um, sorry, just for clarity, by chair, you mean uh, the president? Sorry, yeah. Sorry, Gabe um, is the chair of a lot of committees, but he's not actually a member of one. And there's also another executive officer who is not a member of any. Um, but I was curious if governments would see this apply to Gabe as well. Um, generally, the way we've interpreted the ex officio thing is that you're a member of all committees. So you're actively a member of you, whether you're physically in and go to them or not, as the ex officio allows them to go to a meeting or not, that they, they're a part of all committees. So they, they count. Um, he, and also as chair of, in this case now, not just chair of council, but also chair of um, chair of exec, which doesn't count, but also chair of the human resources and personnel committee, he would fill in all that. As And I believe the second one is Almas does not fully, has all the, the, the requirements, correct? Like she's not part of two yet. Yeah, because she has chair of uh, FASC, which hasn't met yet. Um, but we are looking to get her onto another another committee. So we're working on it. <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't want to sit, okay, to say anyone's name just in case, but um, I, it was mostly to make sure that I understood correctly in the case of Gabe that he would not then use ex officio, so he does not need to join. Um, yeah, I, we could maybe put some clarity, like we can incur, we can think about putting clarifying language within our governance committee to make sure that it's clear because all these terms are definitely a lot new to a lot of different people, like ex officio, what the hell does that mean, right? And when we Google it, sometimes you know, I've, I've seen com not conflicting, but like slightly different implement um, applications of it. So it probably makes sense for us to put some clarifying language just so people understand what that actually means. Or, or how, they're, how we use that to interpret it, the, the requirements like being a, officially being a member of everything, being an active member of everything, right? <laughs> Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I may bring, um, my, the oversight committee is currently, after this, going to go through all of the council policies that pertain to the exec and sure. discuss them. So maybe uh, next meeting I can bring some of the discussions here. I just want to make sure that we're interpreting it the way governance would like it to interpret. Um, oh. Or, or oh, I guess yeah, the way, yeah. Well, I guess we can interpret of... it whatever way works for us, but I would like it yeah. to be. In the long run, it's actually how council would interpret it. Yeah, like they might true. get a recommendation from governance on how to interpret it. Yeah. Right? Like that's one yeah. way of looking at it. Okay. Um, yeah, honestly, if, if if oversight or any committee or any any member raises a different valid interpretation of it, then that just demonstrates that we need to put clarifying language, right? Because um, there is definitely times where you can, there's, there's some stuff I've raised to last year around um, the AVPs, where some of the language in there, I feel that we should add some more clarifying language because there's multiple ways to interpret how something could be implemented. And that's not necessarily a good, good, way, good thing. Um, so this, this is all about really good to have this brought to us um, if they want to get recommendations or clarity or just, or to raise a different perspective will be, is always, always helpful. Um, any other people had a question? I, I know I just kind of just answer all that, but Jess uh, or Mohammed, did you have any perspective on that? I'm currently driving is the issue, but I do have a couple of questions, but I will yeah. ask them in a few minutes. Sure. Um, if you feel safe, dude, I don't really wouldn't want to encourage you to, to talk and drive at the same time. So I like. So if you want to do maybe submit them later as an email, um, I'm happy to forward it. Like you send it even to the whole committee just so we can have it all in paper. But any other things on this part of the discussion? No? Okay. Uh, and you're satisfied with that, Devin? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I wasn't sure if Gabe counted with the ex officio, but that's really fair. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll then move on to our next discussion item, which is going to be governance annual plan. So um, I sent this out a little bit later. I 
expected to. I thought it, I, I scheduled it wrong in the wrong time, in the wrong dates for the wrong time. So it didn't go out as early as I wanted to. But I did submit an, an email to the group about last year's governance committee's annual plan. It was an updated version from November. It was developed in, in summer and then updated with review in November after the AGM occurred. Um, I, what I'll do is I'll share my screen. I know Mohammed, you probably want to see this and that's okay. Cause I, you're again, you're driving. So I don't want to risk anything with you. Um, but this is recorded. So you can always go back and re review when you're in a safe spot. Okay. Uh, share screen. Okay. Can everyone at the screen see the governance committee thing? Yes, we can. Okay, so this one, as I mentioned, is updated in November 2020. Um, the year plan at, at a glance, and this is just a really short one uh, version. There is actually, I think, a longer one that goes in a little bit more detail um, that was approved way back in the uh, summer. But generally, that is you listen to projects, what projects you're, you want to do, description, and a rough timeline, uh, or as best timeline as you can. Um, and then you, and that's really the basics. And then, de and then the second step is delegating these projects. In this case, this was done after this updated version was done after the AGM when we had changed a whole bunch of bylaws. So governance realized one, they couldn't do all the commit, all the council stuff all at once themselves. So they delegated, we developed a number of different transition steering committees. Uh, or sorry, we had one transition steering committee that then we that then broke up into different working groups. And so we delegated specific types of aspects of this plan to that those that steering committee and then they were to work on. Um, so that's maybe a little bit too, that we, we wouldn't necessarily necessarily do that ourselves this year because it really depends on the projects we want to do. But generally the idea is you, you create different projects, describe them, put a timeline in, and that's your plan for the year and then you go through and review at least halfway through to see how things are going uh, in this case some of the projects that were given what were developed was governance restructuring um, which was moving from the carbon model to a policy administrative governance model we've honestly had multiple different names for this thing you know administrative hybrid model whatever but um and the timeline for it was to get it done from may 2020 to june 2020 uh, for the main governance restructuring and then looking into privacy policies in July and August and onwards, this is a review of the board and minute policies. Um, then we also had a bylaw review. So a review of the SOS bylaws and recommend changes to our members for adoption at the AGM that year. And then there was a timeline from July, August, September, each with the relevant uh, section to it. So deciding high level changes, writing the bylaw amendments, student consultation on those amendments, prepare a campaign and starting late September, uh, October is a nose period and campaign period. The, and the, the actual date was on the AGM. And then afterwards, if it was successful, then start executing those changes, generally in changing policy and stuff to make it fit. So does that make sense? The, the first two chunks, two projects? So this were both of them were completed by um, by November. So that was great. Um, then we developed we the other project were SFS issue policy review, where the governance committee would review and create new issues policies. These were brand new, relatively brand new for us because they issues policies were kind of killed off, or not killed, sorry, they were they were repealed in like 2016. Um, and then never really got updated or, or changed until just over two years ago. Um, they, we started bringing them back and we brought them back in a big way last year. Um, so the government, government committee is tasked to work with other board committees such as you know, um, university and academic affairs, external community affairs and BIPOC to develop issues policies, a wide range of areas. Um, you know, student affordability, government affairs, equity, anti-racism, sustainability, etc. Um, the process started in November, and it ended up being, I believe, being a good chunk of them done and finalized in March or April. Um, 
SFS administrative pol policies review. Administrative policies are a lot of our, our stuff that deals with um, things like our privacy policies, our, our, how, how our T policies, our email policies, uh, kind of a lot of more nuts and bolts things of the, the SFS. A lot of them were called in the past called operations policies and they, uh, some of them, need, most of them generally stayed the same. Most of them, they just would change the reporting structure, like who was responsible for what. In most cases, we added things like um, having a board member, an executive as some kind of backup, final backup for everything. Most things went through some kind of administrator or staff, but that, you know, if as a final fail safe, you had a board member that would be um, most likely an exec would be the final oversight. Um, we, it took a little while. There was a few policies that had to get re rewritten quite significantly, I think, especially around certain stuff that tied in with a lot of governance structures or administrative structure stuff. Um, there's also a few policies I don't think that got completed or fully reviewed just because we ran out of time. Um, but it was, for the most part, pretty much done. Um, SOS bylaws, post AGM review. So, so it says the governance committee will focus on areas of the SFS bylaws requiring tidying after the SFS AGM by changes. Primarily this is because like all things, you always miss something. You always miss a typo. You always miss a copy paste error. So we reviewed that and we worked with staff to develop a lot of different little things that got missed. Um, also, because we repealed a number of policies and, uh, sorry, not policies, bylaws, and, you know, merged a few together, the numbering didn't make sense. So we, we our goal at the time was then to develop a set of bylaws, like tidy up the bylaws and go to membership again through referendum to ask them to be cleaned up or to be approved for this cleanup. Um, that got done. Unfortunately, the a, the the, by, the referendum didn't get enough votes over in total, so a quorum was not met. So even though there was, uh, you know, high well well over the thresholds for yes votes, they didn't count. So we will have to approach that again this year. Uh, member service governance guidelines. This one's had a lot of the member services stuff had a lot of changes and additions like. We introduced like special pol special funding options for non-student groups. So like if a student had um, wanted to, oops, if a student group wanted to be, uh, wanted, had a really good idea and they needed some funding for it, they can go to, the, to, to they had a process now to, to get funding. Um, we put in a lot more stuff around constituent groups and student unions and such, and just cleaned up some things. Uh, brought back older policies that we thought should were a good idea back in 2014 and stuff. Um, so, and then afterwards, we delegated stuff to very to a new transit steering committee. There were some of these items were things like the elections and referendum policy review. SOS board policy review and board training improvements because we had three different groups. We had like an operational group. We had the training group, which I think Devin, you were on. Um, the governance, the governance communication or the training communication group. And then we also had the uh, policy, the governance group, which was just most focused on changing the policies to say, go switching say from board to council or just um, ref reflecting the new governance structure. So any initial questions on that? No. So ultimately what we need to do in this committee is develop our own plan for this year. Uh, based on tie, stuff tied in from things that were carried over from the previous governance committee, maybe that didn't get finished or, or need to get, be cleaned up for um, new, new Requests stuff that was not fully reviewed, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and I would like to, if there's any, I'd like to have a discussion on this. Um, like there's some things I would rec I've recognized that we think should we get done this year, but also I'd like to have your thoughts on stuff that as members of, you know, student unions and clubs and others, if there's things that you've seen that you would like to 
have made changes to. That might or might not be relevant to governance, but um, it's good. It doesn't hurt to bring it up. Um, Devin, go ahead. Yeah, I was just, I don't know if this would be too big of a scope, but I, I wonder if it would be possible in our terms of going over the council policies um, to ask committees or council in general to send in any language. And like I had was like, oh, I don't know if Gabe counts or the ex officio counts on that to submit things and then do an overall kind of look through the council policies and see what else is vague. It just might be easier if we also have kind of others that are not just uh, the six of us looking over them um, and see what committees are, five of us, uh, what committees are missing, what council members are missing and uh, okay. uh, then go over them. I don't know if that'd be doable. Um, potentially, yeah. Like there is, looking through some of the policies, the general policies, there's certain types of policies that are uh, certain committees are responsible for reviewing. Um, we, what I would like to do is map that out a little bit more like in a nice tracker type doc. So it's easy for me, for us to say, okay, you know, go to member services and say, hey, can you, uh, the member service advisory committee say like, hey, over the next, you know, six months, can you review X, Y, Z um, policies for these things and get back to us, right? Because going through potentially hundreds of pages of policies, it can be done. We've done it, it's, but it's it's it'd be nice if we can get it, you know, share the the work in some ways, um, but also maybe look more into not just reviewing them for like vagaries, but also like, are they working? Like, how do we how do we ana analyze that they um, these policies actually work, or one that people are following them, and two that they actually do what they're supposed to do, and they're supposed to actually solve some issue. So I, I would, that's one thing I, I for me, myself, I'd like to set up a little bit more of a system for reviewing policies, um, analyzing them, et cetera, so that we, uh, the society, you know, has a better idea of if what it's doing makes sense and works. Jess, is there anything on your end? Do you want recommendations at this moment of what to do? Um, only initial ones. Like, if you have them, great. Um, I wait. Sorry, uh, I'm mm -hmm. not. I don't want to put anyone on the spot. So, if it's more like you want to think about it and come back to me, like I, I'll. What I'll have to do. What I'll do is set up a skeleton doc for people to put their stuff in, the brainstorm in, and I'll put in my my items as well of things I think would be good to get worked on. But if there's anything that, you know, that you know you either ran on as part of your campaigns or campaigning or things that have been in the next couple, the first couple of months, you know, things that you don't think works very well from a policy perspective or don't understand why we're doing it this certain way, happy to. Yeah. Um, uh, something about creating policies around sexual harassment and bullying. Um, I know we previously had an agreement with SESPO and SFU on this, but I think we need to create our own, especially in terms of our clubs and DSUs, and we would have to work with MSEC on this as well. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Mohammed. Uh, yeah, I actually had a further like uh, idea to uh, go about uh, something you mentioned which is how to see how effective a policy is uh, maybe what we can do is uh, begin sort of polling councils uh, to see how uh, like after a month or two months of a policy being initiated whatever that policy may be and with the certain effects that we put into uh, into effect we ask them basically okay how would you rate this policy like how how is it change in the issue uh, stuff like that based on that we can see how effective a policy is or isn't and based on that we can change it or keep it as it is and, yep and if anyone has any notes stuff like that it will help with improvement over time yeah no thank you that's that's definitely a good idea 
Um, so I saw that Mohammed, uh, sorry, not Mohammed, sorry, Betty and uh, Hamas popped in. So Betty, could you give a quick introduction, name, pronoun, access needs? Me, right? Yes, you. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Betty, pronoun, she, her, has access needs, kind of not met. I'm just from the South, I'm trying to, um, Settle. I'm just from the sub. I was there the whole day. Um, and um, yeah, nice to meet you again. Um, I'll just be here to provide support if needed. Mm -hmm. And Amas? Almost when, if you can hear me, um, when you're back on, when you're ready, just uh, list yourself and then we'll uh, try one second, type trying to fix my mic. Okay, no problem. You can also type in chat too, if it makes it easier for you. So I'm just here as a guest um, for everyone um, who doesn't know me already. My name is Almas and I am the VP Finance and Services. And I just wanted to see what actually goes on in the governance committee. So I thought I would attend a meeting. Sure, thank you for attending. And I'm a little yeah. late because I was in a different meeting um, on anti-racism. Okay. But no I think problem. it'll still give me a gist of what goes on. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming. Um, yeah, this is where we primarily review, develop, uh, ideally develop, and modify policies and and or, and or make recommendations to council for changes. Um, so right now we are just talking about uh, developing our annual plan. This will have to be approved by council. Um, and so ideally if we can get it ready for the start of September, that'd be great. But depending on how, because things have gone a little bit longer, be, it started a little bit late. We'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, okay. So what I will do as an action item is I will develop uh, the annual plan uh, doc, the skeleton for the brainstorming, and people can put in what they would like to see, um, including myself, um, and then we can get that started as a process. So by the time we meet next. Um, we will have, we can then hopefully finalize it or at least clean it up, finalize it and then uh, submit it to council. So uh, is there any more comments or questions on this section uh, of this particular discussion item? Uh, Jess, go ahead. I was wondering for your next meeting if we could have a working doc where we could just brainstorm for 10 minutes really quick about any policies that we want to create for the next year. Um, like yeah, the ones we can that we mentioned today. Like you mean like having a working doc right now? Yeah, like a working session within the meeting. Um, we can. We could potentially do it at the end of the meeting if you want to go through all the other, other discussion items first. And then if, if we have time left over, we can have everyone just talk, jump into a doc. Yeah, or sense. like... You know, so, Dev has to head out for 5 30. Yeah. So, I'd like to get as many of the uh, uh, discussions to be involved with as many people here first. Okay. Any other um, uh, comments on annual plan? No? Okay. Uh, let's get into the next item um, 6.2 issues, or sorry, technically 6.3 issues policies. Um, uh, Jess, I believe you submitted this, so I'll give you the floor to, uh, to talk about this particular discussion item. So the execs at the beginning of the year when we started our term, we did an issues policies overview and divided them into months and who's going to be lead. So for July, we have scheduled for affordable housing led by Matt and Corbett divestment. So regarding Palestine and BDS by Marie, Accessible and equitable events by myself and Serena and Two Spirit LGBTQIA with Nim, Gabe, and uh, myself. However, some of these do need to be pushed back to August 
uh, just because some folks are at capacity right now. For August, we have overall student affordability. I actually can just send the link here so that everyone can read for accessibility purposes. Sure. Just give me one moment, please. So I linked the document in the chat. I just don't want to share the screen right now. Um, That's for no August, problem. we have overall student affordability, religious freedom, meaningful consultation, and issues policy uh, that supports uh, trans, non-binary, intersex, gender non-conforming folks and further inclusion within our society and international students, whatever that may be. For the fall semester between September and October, those two months, we have freedom of expression and hate speech, sexual violence and survivor support, the escalation and harm reduction, accessible bursaries, protests and access solidarity and misogyny. And then January to April is a carryover of whatever we need to have it finished. Um, okay. This is just who's working on these issues policies would be the executive team as well as support from ADP and consultation um, with appropriate people. Okay. Um, and so just for clarity, what is the role of governance committee in this, in the issues policies process? Are we overseeing that these are created and double checking or are we working on, like you said, that execs are working on these? So not all execs obviously are on the committee. So just want to. Well, we would have to bring these issues policies to Gov to look over before we pass them to council. So that's okay. why I'm bringing it up to you. Yeah. Okay, great. So you'll want, we'll have governance review the, the policies themselves as well before and make a recommendation to council for their, their, their approval. Yes. Okay. Good to know. Uh, any questions from any other members in the committee about this particular topic? Go ahead, Devin. I just wanted to say, Jess, um, if you ever need help or if people are feeling at capacity doing any of this, I've done my exams like the beginning of next week. So I have a lot more time. If you ever need help with anything, just let me know. Go ahead, Jess. I think, Dev, with your background, we might need your support with the uh, uh, T-Spirit LGBTQIA plus policies. That might be pushed to August, though. So I'll add that and change the document. Also, this document is the, isn't the official one we're looking at. It's just like a cleaned up version. So I'll send that to you as well. Okay, any other questions, comments about this discussion item? Seeing no big listing, uh, that is completed. So 6.4 is actually just uh, an attachment for, for the, the council policy discussion item. Um, so that's not an actual thing. Um, I can set in this course just attachments. So I can move on to adjournment. And then what we can do is after adjournment and we stopped um, recording meeting, we anyone who has the time to stay can jump into a uh, doc and we can just start working a little bit on the annual plan. So, but if those have to maybe, you know, I understand like Devin has to go to another meeting. Um, I'm not sure what your situation is at, but if you have other things, no problem. Um, but me and Jess, I think we'll probably definitely be sticking around for a little bit and working on some stuff. But I will share with the, through email anyways, the link for the doc. All right, does that make sound good for everyone? Oh, Muhammad, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so I wanted to ask if we could go back to the first discussion item before adjournment, if that's okay with everyone and, and with you, obviously. Because uh, I just got home, but I'm locked out. Okay. So, I, <laughs> so I just want to get this over with and talk to my landlord. So by first one, you mean like the council policy? Um... No, the, the discussion item brought forth by uh, uh, Devin, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the exact committee duties. Okay. Since the discussion items is not really a big deal if it's like, you know, in order, we can always go back to something. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, 
Devin, if you can, you do a quick overview of, or summary of what what you brought this for, just so we can catch up, Mohammed. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Let me just pull up the uh, policy again. But basically, I wanted to get clarification on our uh, 3.5, which requires all execs to be chair of a standing committee, as well as a member of a committee that is not the executive committee. And I just wanted clarification on uh, those requirements, as well as uh, uh, the president had to meet those requirements of being a member. But uh, as noted by Corbett, ex officios, uh, as an ex officio, Gabe is technically part of every single um, every single uh, committee. Um, so I just wanted to get clarification on that one. Uh, yeah, so I do have a, a different perspective, if that's okay yeah. uh, for me to sure. mention. Yeah, uh, I know. Sorry, I'm, I'm holding up the meeting a little bit. Uh, I just had a different perspective through the idea of uh, if you specify that you have to be a chair for one committee and a member of another, I think that allows more of a, a leniency for other councils to take those chairing positions. And maybe that's why there's that specificity of only chair of one and a member of one, so that uh, so that not like one or two executives take uh, chairing powers of all committees. Yeah, so I think that's one reason why they put it like that. I'm not 100 percent sure why it is like that, but that's a perspective I have on it. That that's the points I wanted to share uh, uh, beforehand. Yeah, go ahead, Devin, for the direct reply. Yeah, um, maybe I'm interpreted as this in a different way, but my understanding was, and I'm, I didn't say this as clearly because I'm reading from the paper, but it's at least chair of at least one committee and a member of at least one. So I think execs can be like Corbett, you're chair of like 5 million um, committees, uh, but um, uh, uh, I think they can be in as many as they would, um, I mean, chair as many as they need to be, and then they just have to be a member of one that's not the exec. Um, but definitely I can, I'm sorry, I'm just pulling it up again. Yeah, it says at least. So I don't know yeah. if anyone else has a different perspective than that, but. I, I can jump in and actually give some historical perspective because I was involved with some developing some of those policies. Uh, Mohammed, you're, you're some, you're kind of right in the sense that um, having, in this case, at least one committee means like it's, it's a floor. So they have to have, be a chair of a committee. Uh, so there has to be something that they lead. And in most cases in our bylaws, almost every exec has one kind of specialized committee for them, like finance and administrative service committee for finance and services, um, events and student affairs for VP events, student affairs, et cetera. Um, the idea too is to allow, not that make it so that not all execs have to be um, a chair. Uh, so you may, you know, when you look at all the different committees, standing committees in our policies, some of them uh, that an executive is a chair, sometimes it's a specific executive, sometimes it's generally an executive, any executive, but some are also not like first year engagement, Surrey campus, Vancouver campus committees, etc. cetera. Um, and that's to allow counselors and opportunities to also uh, be chairs and, and such and to spread the load, the workload out. So that as, as uh, you mentioned, Mom, that one, not all committees are managed by exec only. Um, one for that's a lot of work and two, it's not really healthy in the long run for the, the governance and experience and, 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 and skill building that um, council members get. So uh, any other comments on, on this item since we've gone back to it? Go ahead, Devin. I guess it's it's a nitty gritty, but uh, since you helped uh, develop, I was wondering what actively means in regard. It's used a couple of times throughout uh, policies. Does actively, I know you have to attend, if you miss two meetings consecutively with no regrets, you're out. And then there's also pay increase, decreases if you don't attend meetings without regrets. So I'm curious, actively means in this scenario. Uh, basically, how you interpret it, that you have to be attending these meetings um, yeah, you have to be a member of the committee and you have to be active in attending them and, and being engaged in them. And as I said, if they miss too many in a row without regrets, then they abandon their seats um, and that becomes an issue. And so it's, it, the idea is, I think, also to disencourage 
like um, people just putting people on a committee or worse, making a committee just to have people on it to fulfill our bylaw requirements. Um, and that committee never meets or doesn't do anything. Um, the issue of like, if the committee is actually meeting is a whole other challenge, but that's that's nothing to do with like uh, our policy or bylaw issues. That's more of a chair issue. Um, so, and, that, and if someone has those, they can also bring it up to governance or, or me as VB internal, because it's my responsibility to oversee that and make sure that committees are actually meeting and doing work and being effective. So, yeah. Any other questions or comments? If not, then I will close the section and we will go back down to adjourn. Okay. Um, so uh, eight, I'm going to item 8.1, uh, adjournment. Uh, re resolve to adjourn the meeting at 5.20 p.m. Do I have a mover? Yes, moves. Thank you, Jess. Do I have a seconder? Seven seconds. Thank you, Devin. Um, any com? Any discussion? Everyone wants to stay here longer and talk about governance and policies. <laughs> Seeing none, uh, I will move to a vote. All in favor, seeking unanimous consent. If you would like to dissent or abstain, please use the raise hand feature uh, on Zoom, and I will call on you to record your vote. Seeing none, uh, that carries unanimously. Thank you all for attending. Uh, I hope you have a, a good evening. Um, and uh, I hope to see you all tomorrow at council. Have a good night. Corbett, can I ask you a quick question? Sure, uh, wait, the recording's still on. Oh. <laughs>